Hello, Brian the Fanboy here, and September of 2023 is the 30th anniversary of Animaniacs. So yes, it's been 30 years since the first episode of Animaniacs first aired on Fox Kids back in September of 1983. In, a, in honor of the show's 30th anniversary, I did rewatch the first episode that aired, and I'm going to review it. Now, um, the first episode, well, um, it comes in segments, and well, um, the start, which is the cold opening, well, it was at the beginning. Uh, you have this narrative narrator saying, uh, "Newsreel of the stars." Now, for those who don't know, um. News reels were these uh, things that uh, this new stuff that happened in um back in the nineteen thirties or something. Yeah, now uh, it will play at local theaters. Anyway, um, in that part of the episode, the narrator was talking about uh the Warner Brothers Studios, and uh, yeah, which was um. Uh, Located in Hollywood, California, home to uh, many of the biggest stars. And um, there was also a studio animation, de an animation department called Dermic Terrace. I really liked of it the nickname of, a, um, of this building um, where a lot of the classic Wonder Brothers cartoons were um, being made. Now, and that, uh, and also, um, uh, at the cold opening, it, it uh, featured the, the creation of the Warner Brothers and their sister Dot. And then once all three were finally finished being drawn, they jumped out of the drawing board and so to uh, cause chaos around the studio. Of course, officially they were captured. Now, uh, the water cartoons, which made no sense, they were locked up in a studio vault, never to be released. And the Warners themselves, who also made no sense, were locked up in the water tower, also never to be released. And the studio disavowed any knowledge of the water's existence until the day when the Warners escaped. And then we had the theme song. Now, after the theme song, we have a um, segment called Desanitize. And that's Sanitize with a Z. And well, uh, what happened is that uh, Dr. Scratchy Sniff was uh, recalling this story to another psychiatrist about uh, how he met the Warners. And well, uh, well, he said for 50 years he's been um, the studio's main psychiatrist and he's been talking to many of famous stars. And one of them was Ronald Reagan and well, he told Dr. Scratchy Sniff that um, he had a dream about being president of the United States. And uh, well, Dr. Scratchy Sniff uh, wrote on his small notebook uh, uh, yeah, delusion of grandeur or something like that. Of course, in real life, Ronald Reagan did become president back in the 80s. But anyway, um, also putting out that uh, during most of his time at uh, Warner Brothers, Dr. Scratch Sniff, he used to have bad hair. And then, of course, as time went on, his hair became gray. But you know, during all that time, um, yes, he uh, did a uh, lot of his patients were famous Hollywood stars. And there was even pictures of the discussion with uh, a lot of them. And then came the day when the Warners escaped from the water tower and wreaked havoc all over the studio. Uh, Fadius Plotz, who was the chairman of the um, 
Wonder Player Studios, he uh, ordered Dr. Scratch Sniff to um, uh, deal with the Warners, and when he asked why, Blots, he pointed out because Dr. Scratch Sniff is a psychiatrist. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that um, before that part, um, the discussion did meet the Warners on the same day that uh, they escaped. And it was, uh, well, um, when uh, the discussion of as he is, um, Shaco said um, the discussion of the guy who is the stars, and the discussion of said yes, and then Shaco asked what, uh, what he wanted. And the discussion I said nothing, and Jaco said, "Ask what kind of game show is this?" And the discussion I says that it's not a game show. And uh, Jaco said, "Well, um, nobody wins anything." Now, uh, then came uh, Doctor Discussion's Sex- first session with the Warners, and well. They've been, you know, the world's been making jokes, and the one, I mean, Dr. Scratchy Sniff, he told them to stop making jokes and told them to plant themselves on the um, bed. And the, well, the Warners, they um, jump on the couch literally as flowers. And uh, Dr. Scratchy Sniff reminded them that he said no jokes. And Jaco said that it's not a joke, but a visual gag. And Dr. Discussion said, no jokes, no gags, no monkey stuff. And when Jaco asked, what uh, do they find monkey stuff? Dr. Discussion said, he started acting like a monkey. And, uh, well, uh, Jaco said that uh, Dr. Discussion said, my had to say, be a psychiatrist. And uh, Dr. Discussion said, but you know the, um, that he is a psychiatrist. Now, when I first saw this episode as a kid, I thought the word was beast psychiatrist. You know, like a beast. But now I know that they said beast psychiatrist. You know, maybe like a pointing out that uh, there's a B in the word, even though it's silent. Well, anyway, um. Dr. Discretion if uh, decided to uh, have the Warners talk with a puppet that he refers to as Mr. Puppet Head, which was a puppet, a puppet version of the Discretion Sniff. And made them ask Warners why they always do the jokes. And uh, then, uh, well, the Warners didn't say anything, and the Discretion Sniff, he um, asked why they're not talking to Mr. Puppet Head. And, uh, Try to give an example, and well, Jaco said that uh, as if the discussion was sure he uh, didn't see a piece of psychiatrist. And then, um, oh yeah, Doctor Scratch Sniff he uh, made Mister Puppet Head pull up his hair, and Jaco said that Doctor Scratch Sniff, I mean Mister Puppet Head, is hungry. Oh, I forgot to mention that um. And the scene where the Warners met the discussion sniff, well, uh, he called the nurse and the male Warners, that's when they started their famous hello nurse sign. Because, uh, well, the Warner Brothers, since they're boys. And, um, yes, uh, because they end up having a crush on the woman who name would eventually be called hello nurse in the later seasons. And you know, that she well, uh, but she was saying boys, you know, since um, I don't watch the girl. So anyway, um, back to uh, the sessions. Well, after the uh, incident with Mister Puppethead, the two sketching names decided to um, see the wonders one by one. He first started with Dot. And uh, he, well, um, tried to, well, he first um, decided to use the ink blood test. And uh, as uh, he asked Dot what she says about it, and Dot said that uh, the discussion sniff is not a very good artist. 
and thought his consciousness said that uh, he didn't draw it. And thought said that whoever it did should go back to school. <laughs> it was funny. And uh, what in that is it again? You know the panel was going back and forth, and you know that this consciousness was getting uh, frustrated and was well, to calm down a bit and ask if it looks like a kitten or a butterfly. And then <laughs> thought she took out the um, ink block out of the uh, tablet and turned it into an actual butterfly, and catching it, I tried to catch it with a net. And thought this question that he pulled more his hair out. And then the next uh, session was with Waco. And you know, he um, said about uh, having a talk with him, and Waco was fine. Well, I said, uh, all right, then. Well, he asked Waco was on his mind, and uh, he said, uh, his hair, and the discussion I said that as was on his head. He was acting was on his mind. And then I said um, his skin. And then putting up that was on his head, not on his mind. And then the, uh, said that uh, Waku said his call and said that it's, um, it was on his um, hand, his mind, in a way. And then uh, the dude's question if he pulled out uh, more his hair out and said, uh, "Say, you know, this is here. It's not in my, it's not in my, my mind. It's on my head." And Waco said, "No, it's in your hands." And uh, <laughs> the dude's question if became even more frustrated. And then, uh, well, then he asked Waco what he's feeling, and <laughs> Waco said his shirt. And Dr. Sojourner said that's what he's touching. What is his feeling? And Waku said his head. And Dr. Sojourner said that that is what he's touching. No. And then uh, Dr. Sojourner asked uh, how does he feel? I mean, Waku, how does he feel? And Waku said he feels fine. And well, uh, relieved, Dr. Sojourner asked if he could explain on that. And um, Waku, he blew him, well, uh, Expanded himself, literally expanded himself like a balloon. <laughs> Doctor's question is said that uh, that's not what he meant, and told him to stop. And well, Waco got up in and popped himself like a balloon, <laughs> and was flying around the room. And it was very funny. And then the next um, session was with um, Jago, and then uh, he. Well, um, the discussion of FIFA doing that uh, word association game where, um, well, uh, the discussion of he would say a word and Jaco would say would say the first thing that comes to mind. Of course, um, Jaco started even though the discussion of <laughs> didn't start, and then he got more frustrated than he can, and um, <laughs> you know, saying like that. I don't think it because you know I can hold it because of how funny it was. But um, yes, and then uh, he was saying he grabbed Jacko, saying out, 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 and Jacko was saying leave, 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 and threw Jacko out of the door. And um, that is question of he uh, pulled the rest of his hair out, saying that those gifts are driving him crazy, and Jacko returned saying. Insane, unhinged, demented, <laughs> and eventually that was the end of his story, and that also showed how the discussion has became bold. And the discussion has said that that the kids are still nationalized, and as uh, the other psychiatrist, if he's going crazy, and well, to his shock, turns out that he was. That the guy that he was talking to was actually the Warners, and Jacko said that he has a, that that special sniff has a severe case of a good Warner itis, and that special sniff he jumped out of the building, and Jacko was like, "Is this something I said?" And that was the end of that segment in the first episode. Now, uh, the next episode was the Monkey Song, 
which was the first musical number of the uh, series. And well, um, it starts by showing the good feathers with a uh, squid. He was um, playing this flute and Pesto, he got annoyed and decided to beat him up. Also, um, eventually, um, Squid, he got away, um, so he could continue playing his flute, and also, uh, the hippo couples, you know, the hippos from Animaniacs, uh, they were there, and they were, uh, playing some kind of Korean music, uh, in front of a camera, and then Dr. Scratchy Nev, he, well, he was in his psychiatrist's patient chair, and then he started singing about um, the stress he goes through with the Warners, and the Warners they sing their part as well. And um, also, the musical number would introduce some other characters. Of course, uh, not all of them did talk. I mean, to be to be mad and things. And well, like I said before, it was a musical number, so I guess I don't have to say much. You can just. Well, the whole thing is on YouTube, so you can watch it there. Now, um, now we get to the final segment of the episode, which was called the uh, Nighty Night Toon. This was a parody of the children's book, Good Night Moon. And well, um, this would uh, once again uh, feature uh, the other characters from Animaniacs. I mean, some of them already appeared in the Monkey Song. But order um, didn't. And in, um, in the narrator of the seg segment was Jim Cunnings, and he uh, used his Winnie the Pooh voice. And uh, an interesting thing is that um, oh wait, before I get to that, I forgot to mention uh, the Monkey Song was a parody of the Monkey Song by Harry. Bella Fonte, I think his name is, but um, well, uh, for those who don't know, it was the same guy who sang the Banana Boat song, you know, the one that became famous uh, in the movie Beetlejuice, you know, during that dinner party scene. Now, back to 1992, yes, Jim Cunnings, he uh, narrated in his Winnie the Pooh voice, and uh, well, an interesting thing is that he really did voice Winnie the Pooh in the cartoon series, The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, and he's been voicing that character and other projects ever since. So anyway, yes, he and named some of the characters, and like, uh, oh, it was also an introduction of Mr. Skullhead, in anime, yes, of course. There was the Good Feathers, Vicky and the Brain, What is a Mindy, Peter and Brunt, The Warners, The Discretion Snape and Hello Nurse, and let's see. Oh, and Slappy Squirrel. Oh, and the Hippos as well. And then uh, after introducing um, the characters, the narrator, he um, then said good night to each one. And, um, and also say good night to the studios and good night to everybody everywhere and to Warners they said good night Wacko's underwear and that was the end of the first episode of Animaniacs and oh, well yes uh, the first episode was really funny and I mean I don't think I did laugh that much I mean I did enjoy watching Animaniacs but I wasn't kid but um I only like it because it's a cartoon. That's it. Although, um, as an adult, I finally get the jokes now. Yes, and um, I like uh, the idea of rewatching the old episodes uh, again someday. Uh, I guess I know when that will be because um, there's others I want to watch first. So um, I'll see what happens. And um, as for what's going on in the Anything special for the 30th anniversary of Animaniacs? Well, um, oh, uh, there was a, a special event at WaterCon a month ago, this year. Um, you can watch, you know, moments from that on YouTube. Uh, 
the uh, available on other channels, so you can check those out. And as for what's going on on the actual anniversary day of the Maniacs, well, I haven't found anything. I mean, there was, uh, yeah, people were getting excited about it on Twitter, but um, uh, anything that I'm special that I, I'd like to mention. But anyway, yeah. Uh, Yes, um, I think that's all I can say for the 30th anniversary of Animaniacs, and also, please subscribe to my channel because it will help me a lot, and also, please share this video on social media like Facebook, Twitter, or whatever, so that's it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.